In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a very simple oscillator circuit. So what you need is a battery. I'm using a six volt battery, an electric motor and a capacitor. And I'm using a digital multimeter to measure the voltage, the current and the frequency. Now there's a lot of other oscillator circuits that you can build, but this one, it's very simple, but definitely not a stable one. So let's talk about how it works. The battery is going to deliver current to the circuit and as the current flows through the motor, the motor will begin to spin. And as it does so, it's going to generate a back EMF, a time varying signal. That AC signal will bypass the capacitor. The capacitor is designed to block a DC signal, a direct current signal, but it passes an AC signal. This particular capacitor is a 16 volt capacitor with a capacitance of 1000 microfarads, which is the same as one millifarad. Now for this particular circuit that I use, I got a, a voltage of one volt AC. The frequency varied between one to two kilohertz and the current was around 60 milliamps. So let me show you a demonstration. <laughs> So as you saw in that demonstration, this was definitely not a stable circuit. The frequency varied widely from one to two kilohertz. Now, the frequency, the voltage, and the current that is measured by the digital voltmeter, or the digital multimeter rather, does depend on the type of motor that you use. Notice what happens when I use a different type of motor. So let's call the old motor, the small one, motor one, and the large one, motor two. The voltage decreased from about one volt to about 0 0.028 volts. The current decreased from around 60 milliamps to about 7.1 milliamps. And the frequency, based on those readings, it didn't really change much, but the good thing was there was stability with the second motor. The voltage, the current, and the frequency, it wasn't oscillating widely. So depending on the type of motor you use, you could make a, a relatively stable oscillator circuit. Now the reason why the values are so low is because the motor is a lot bigger and it takes more energy to run that motor. Now the motor is spinning at a slower rate than the first motor because there's less current flowing through that circuit. So if you can increase the voltage of the battery, you could send more current flowing through the motor and thus you can increase these values. So the voltage, the output voltage, the output current, the frequency, not only depends on the type of motor you use, but also the voltage of the battery that you're using in the circuit. Because if you can increase the voltage, you can increase the current flowing through the motor, causing it to spin at a higher speed, and so you're going to generate a higher voltage, a higher current, and a different frequency. So now, in that last demonstration, we're still using the second motor, but at a different voltage we've increased the voltage to 12 volts, as you can see by the eight AA energized batteries. Now the voltage, it varied widely. We didn't really get a good reading for that. The current increased from 7.1 milliamps to about 13 to 14 milliamps. And the frequency, 
was around 3.5 to 4 kilohertz. So increasing the voltage of the battery caused the motor to spin at a higher rate and so we got a higher current output and a higher frequency um, at the output as well. Now in order to decrease the voltage swings one thing that we could do is we could put a resistor across the voltmeter. So let's start with a 100 ohm resistor. So as we saw in that last demonstration, using a resistance of 100 ohms gave us an output voltage of around 0 0.09 volts. Now what if we increase it to, let's say, 1000 ohms or 1 kilo ohm? Let's see what's going to happen. So we saw that the voltage varied from 0.11 volts to 0.13 volts. So by increasing the value of R, the voltage increased, but we lost stability as a trade-off. It was much more stable when we use a resistance of 100 ohms as opposed to 1 kilo ohm. But that's something you can do to make it more stable. You could decrease the voltage of the battery so that this would spin at a lower but more stable rate, or you can add a resistor across the output to increase the stability of the circuit. Now I've decided to make a few modifications uh, to the circuit. I'm still using the same capacitor, but I'm using a transformer as an inductor. And this is attached to the center part of the primary side of the transformer. The secondary side is not being used. So notice what happens in this circuit. Notice the output that we get. So notice that the output voltage increase to a range of about 1.6 to 1.7 volts. The frequency was also higher. It varied between 20 and 25 kilohertz. I think at one point it was 28. And the current was also much higher between 120 and 140 milliamps. So why, do, why are we getting such larger numbers here? Keep in mind, the AC signal that's produced by the motor as it spins, it can not only travel in this direction and vice versa, but it can also travel through the battery as well, thus reducing the output voltage. So by placing the inductor here, you increase the impedance of the circuit on the left. So you make it harder for the AC signal to travel in that direction. So it's easier for it to flow towards the output where is where we want it to flow. So that's one reason. The second reason is that the current flowing through the inductor in this circuit is not a pure constant DC source. Rather, it varies due to this motor. So if the motor wasn't there, and let's say this is a voltage time graph, we would have a relatively constant DC signal. But because of the back EMF generated by the motor, we have an AC signal that basically rides on the DC signal. So it fluctuates around six volts. When the current in the inductor increases, the inductor stores energy. The magnetic field inside the inductor expands as the current increases. When the current decreases, that's during this portion of the graph, the magnetic field collapses, releasing energy, and thus generating a high voltage or a higher voltage across the inductor. And so this is one of the reasons why we get a higher voltage across the output. Now for the next demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the circuit a bit. So I'm no, I'm no longer going to connect to the center part of 
the transformer, but I'm going to connect it to this portion. So notice what happens to the voltage across the output in this case. Thus, as was evident in the last demonstration, we saw that the output voltage varied widely, but it was for the most part above 6 volts. So it was a lot higher than 1.6, 1.7 volts. Thus, as we can see, by increasing the inductance of the inductor, the output voltage increase. But there are limitations. Because I tried using the secondary side of the transformer, which has a lot more coils of wire, and thus a higher inductance, but the motor wouldn't even spin. And the reason for that is because this transformer also has its own internal resistance. So if the internal resistance is too high, the motor may not even spin at all. So there's a trade-off. As you increase the inductance of the inductor, the internal resistance goes up. So this will increase the voltage, but if the internal resistance is too high, the motor may not spin at all, and so the output voltage might be zero. So you got to find that sweet spot when trying to build a stable oscillator circuit with this design. So that's it for this video. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.